Hello everyone. Welcome to the course on data structure and algorithm. In this video, we are going to discuss sparse metrics. So first, let us try to understand where sparse metric is used. So majority elements of sparse metrics are zero. Let's take an example. For example, we are you know reading uh, input uh, from let's say a sensor, right? Uh, every every second we are uh, reading inputs. But you know, most of the time sensor does not detect anything and it returns zero. So most of the inputs will be zero. The moment sensor detects something, it returns one or something else. So it, this is something like, you know, if we read the data elements which are given by sensor, it would be mostly like zero, 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 zero. The moment it detects something, it will be one. Then again, zero, 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 right? So in most of the time, the data will be zero. And if there is some detection, motion detection or something else, it will be one. So if this uh, kind of example is there where most of the elements are zero, then in that case, uh, we can use sparse matrix. All right, so sparse matrix, let us take this example. Uh, let's say this is uh, four cost four matrix, it means uh, uh, there are uh, four rows and there are four columns. So, so total four cross four, there are total 16 uh, elements are there, but out of 16, only one, two, three, four, and five. Five are non-zero elements, and other other means out of uh, 16 5 are non zero that means 11 are zero so majority of elements are zero so in this case uh, we can use sparse matrix because over here more than half of the elements are zero element now let us move forward now why sparse matrix why do i need to use sparse matrix so storing all instead of if i store these all what will happen if there are 16 elements and every element requires two bytes that means i need to have 32 bytes same way suppose there are 1000 elements and out of 1000 elements only let's say 10 elements are non-zero but still if i store everything if i store zero also then what will happen 1000 element multiply by two bytes equal to 2000 bytes but we know that out of 2000 bytes, only 10 elements are important, all others are zero. So when you want to store only non-zero element, that means at, at what row, at what column, and what is the value, then we can use a sparse matrix. So let us now see. So computational power will be you know improved because only non-zero elements are store zero elements are not stored so these zero elements will be not storing in the matrix only non-zero elements we will be storing along with the row and the column respective row and the column of that particular element now so how do we represent or implement sparse matrix so mostly uh, we'll be doing it over uh, here using array but it can also be implemented using linked list too so let us try to understand array representation of sparse matrix. So let us have a two dimensional array. That means uh, uh, rows and columns. Let's say we are having three rows. Then uh, first row indicating row of non-zero elements. Second row indicating uh, the non-zero column. So let us take one example so that you will understand. Let us have the same example. Uh, we are having a normal. This is a normal array. It, it is having, uh, sorry, uh, this is the normal array. It is having all the elements, zero as well as. Now, if you look at very carefully, we are having only five non-zero elements. So now all we need to do is just handle these five non-zero elements. Okay. So now we'll be storing, let us try to store only five non-zero elements. So how are we going to store it? So for that, there are two different ways. First is for this particular element, let's say five. Let us find out the row. Row is zeroth row. Uh, this one is zeroth row and column. So column is zero first second, second column. So zeroth row, second column, the element is five. So zeroth row, second column, the element is five. Let's talk of, let's say, this element, 9. So 9 is the second row, second row, but 0th column. Second row, but 0th column. 
so for 9 second row zeroth column the element is 9 this is how you can store there is another way now normally we don't use this because over here what will happen the number of columns will increase so this uh, this is something that we are going to use it so now for this let us try to understand uh, uh, this one we are uh, let us talk of only non zero elements so 5 so 5 is zeroth row and second column so zeroth row second column 5 then this number this one so that is 0th row but third column so 0th row third column element is 2 let's talk of this 6 so that is first row and third column so first row and third column element is 6 let's talk of this 9 so it is second row 0th column so 9 is on second row 0th column and the last element is 7 it's on the third row and 0th column so 7 is on the third row, 0 column. So this is the normal way to represent a sparse matrix. So rather than you know putting all those 16 values, we'll be putting only 5 values along with row and column. Now let us move forward. So let us talk of how are we going to implement or uh, using C programming. So let us write a small uh, C programming code to check whether the given matrix is sparse matrix or not. That means if more than half of the elements are zero, that is the sparse matrix. If it is a four cross four matrix, then four cross four, that means total 16 elements. So if more than eight elements are uh, zero, that means it is a sparse matrix. So all we need to check is this one. So let us write a small code, E sparse. So this is the function E sparse. Uh, wherein we are passing the array into this function and this function will return either if it is not sparse if it is not sparse then it will return if it is not sparse then it will return minus one but if it is sparse then it will return the number of zero number of zero for example, out of uh, 16, suppose in our previous case, uh, 11 were the total number of zero elements. So it returns 11. So there are two different things that we are going to return. If it is not sparse, means if half of the elements are not uh, the zero element, in that case it will return minus one, that means it is not a sparse matrix. Otherwise, it will return the counter. Now let us uh, go to the program. See, look at this program. We have defined rows equal to 4, column equal to 3. That means there are 4 rows. Look at this. Uh, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So there are 4 rows and let's say there are uh, 3 columns. So 1, 2 and 3. Alright. And we are going to put something over here. 0, 5, 0. So this is my first row. 0, 5, 0. Then uh, 0, 0, 8. This is my second uh, row. 0, 0, 8 then this 0 0 0 so 0 0 0 and then 1 0 0 1 0 0 so if you carefully look at here you will see that uh, there are uh, only three non-zero elements 5 8 and 1 out of total how many 4 into 3 so total there are 12 elements and out of 12 elements only three elements are non-zero that means nine elements are zero nine means half more than half of the elements are uh, zero that means this is my sparse matrix now le let us try to understand so i am passing this matrix to this function so this s is copied into this a so s is copied into a and then over here what we are doing we are just checking using two uh, for loops mm, uh, first is uh, i and second is j so for row and column and every time we are checking whether it is zero if it is zero we are incrementing count that means in our case how many uh, the value of count will be one two three four uh, five six seven eight and nine so in our case the count the value of count will be nine because there are nine zero so nine is greater than row multiplied by column row is four multiplied by three so 4 multiplied by 3 12 divided by 2 so it is 6 so 9 is greater than or equal to 6 yes or no yes 
so in that case return count return count means return 9 so that 9 will be written over here in the status so value of status will be 9 now check whether status equal to minus 1 no because in our case status is not minus 1 in that case will be you know printing that sparse matrix with this many rows and this many columns we have percentage d elements percentage d means nine elements all right so if i print so it will print like the sparse matrix with nine uh, zero elements from total 12 elements total 12 means row into this uh, four multiply by three so this will be printed over here and uh, this status status is equal to nine that will be printed over here so this program would check whether the matrix is sparse or not now let us move forward the next program is to convert the matrix the given matrix into sparse matrix so let us uh, try to do this so this is the program to convert the given matrix so we have the original matrix with row and column so we have uh, you know something like this we have four rows we have four rows and three columns so let us put all this value over here 050 zero, zero, then uh, 008 zero, zero, then 000 zero, 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 and then 100 zero, zero. so 100 zero, zero. this is my original matrix this is my original matrix and I want to convert this into sparse matrix. So sparse matrix is having, uh, you know, three columns. Sparse matrix is having three columns, but uh, the no uh, number of rows have been uh, defined. Look at this. Uh, so this one is my sparse matrix. Uh, okay so having three column and the number of rows are 10 means i have defined some maximum number so you can have 10 or 100 whatever all right so now let us try to check from original matrix check whether it is zero if it is zero uh, we are not going to use it because we are only interested in you know non-zero elements all right so we will we, we will only be talking of non-zero elements so we'll be talking of this five we'll be talking of this eight we'll be talking of this one only non-zero element so check uh the first thing is for uh, we are going to use two loops one for row one for column and if it is not zero if it is not zero in that case what we are going to do for example let's say five uh, let's talk of this five so for five i equal to zero and j equal to one for five i equal to zero so that i we are going to store in zero with column of sparse matrix. so this i equal to zero we will be storing here now that j will be storing in first column so that j equal to one will be storing over here one and the element the element that means the five itself that we are going to store in second column so that five will be storing over here so zero a row, first column and five likewise for eight it is first row and second column so first row second column eight likewise for this one so zero one two three so third row but zeroth column so third row but zeroth column and the element is one so this is how it is going to be stored and every time i am keeping one counter just to make sure how many elements are over here so that counter will be three because three rows have been added and at the end i, I, I am going to run one loop for count time that means for three times and I'll be printing 0 1 5 1 2 8 and 3 0 1 so look at this so if I remove all this stuff uh, uh, so it will be 0 1 5 1 2 8 and 3 0 1 so this is nothing but my row number row number this is nothing but my column number and these are my elements non zero elements non zero elements so this is how you can convert you can convert the regular matrix into you can convert the regular matrix into sparse matrix right and you can see this code available over here on this link on the github 
so with this uh, i thank you everyone for watching this video and in our next video we'll be talking on uh, one more linear data structure which is stack so thank you very much all of you